Welcome guys to another webinar uh, with Fitness Australia. We've got Mark Chapman here, um, who'll be taking you guys through um, some tax tips and how to get the most out of your tax return. So uh, Mark, whenever you're ready, good to get going. Okay, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you to uh, all the uh, Australian fitness members for uh, inviting me along to today's webinar. Um, I'm gonna be talking about uh, tackling your taxes uh, for this year. Um, uh, giving you an overview of uh, uh, what you need to be aware of when you're filing your tax returns and giving you some tips as to uh, how you can maximize your refund. Um, I'm going to spend the first uh, part of this presentation, sort of 15, 20 minutes or so, talking about uh, individual tax returns, uh, particularly geared towards employees. And then towards the end, I'll spend, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes or so talking about uh, small business tax returns, how uh, small businesses can uh, uh, maximize uh, their refund. So um, without further ado, uh, let's look at just the basics, uh, the, 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 the really the starting point for, uh, for this session. Um, everybody, has to lodge a tax return every year. Well, almost everybody, everybody earning more than $18,200 uh, has to lodge an income tax return every year. If you don't use a tax agent, um, you must lodge by the 31st of October. Um, uh, any later than that, and you're gonna be subject to a late filing penalty, um, uh, which could potentially uh, escalate into the uh, uh, hundreds or even thousands of dollars. If you use a tax agent, uh, you might be able to lodge uh, as late as May next year. So if you think you're not gonna be able to lodge by the 31st of October, uh, I would strongly recommend that you uh, use a tax agent because you will have access to those extended deadlines. Um, obviously, all of your uh, income needs to be reported on your return. So that includes your uh, income from your job, uh, it also includes uh, second jobs, uh, business income, including any uh, sharing economy work that you do, investment income, uh, so rental properties, bank interest, uh, shares, dividends, etc. And uh, it also includes capital gains. So if you've made a capital gain on the disposal of a house or shares, it needs to be reported on your tax return. So all of your income needs to be reported, but also all of your expenses need to be reported as well. Expenses incurred in your job are allowable as deductions against your taxable income. We'll talk in a bit more detail in uh, on the next on the next few slides about some of the deductions that you can claim against your uh, your income, uh, how they can potentially uh, potentially mount up if you are uh, fully aware of what you can claim. Also, uh, residency. Um, if you are an Australian resident for tax purposes, all of your worldwide income needs to be reported on your Australian tax return. So if you have income coming in from overseas, a, 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 in addition to income, also capital gains coming in from overseas, uh, that then needs to be reported on your tax return. Conversely, if you are not Australian resident, so if you are here uh, on a... Uh, uh, if, if you're overseas and lodging an Australian tax return uh, or, or otherwise not resident, uh, you're, only res you're only accessible to Australian tax on your Australian income. You don't need to report any overseas income. Um, in addition, if you're uh, a non-resident for tax purposes, you aren't entitled to the tax fee threshold and you're generally speaking taxed at higher rates. Generally speaking, your, uh, uh, your, your initial tax rate is 32.5% all the way up to 120,000. There's a third category, which is a temporary resident. Um, a temporary resident is basically somebody who's on a temporary, uh, temporary visa. Uh, uh, so 457 skills visas, etc. they all count as temporary. Um, in addition, uh, New Zealand, uh, residents who come to Australia, uh, they acquire uh, what's called a special category visa, and that is regarded as a temporary visa. So if you are a New Zealander here in Australia, you'll probably probably be taxed as a temporary resident. Um, temporary residents are uh, subject to uh, the Australian uh, uh, 
resident tax rates, and they're also entitled to the tax-free threshold. Uh, but in, a, but uh, in addition to that, they are not taxed on their worldwide income. Temporary residents only pay tax on their Australian uh, sourced income and gain. So if you, are, for example, are a New Zealand resident living here and you've got New Zealand, uh, New Zealand investment properties, um, you won't have to declare those in your Australian tax return. So in some respects, that's uh, pretty much the best of both worlds, really, because you don't pay tax on your foreign income, uh, but uh, uh, you are entitled to uh, the tax free threshold and you pay taxes at Australian resident rates. So deductions, let's spend a bit of time talking about uh, deductions. So the general rule is, is that uh, if you've spent something for work, uh, you can claim a tax deduction for it, provided you've not been reimbursed by your, uh, by your employer. So to claim a deduction, uh, first of all, you need to be able to prove that you spent the money. So you must have the substantiation. Um, you must have a receipt, an invoice, et cetera, to prove that you actually spent that money. If you spend something partly for work and partly for private use, uh, you must portion the cost. So for example, if you've got a mobile phone bill, uh, which you used 25% uh, for work and 75% for private use, and that mobile phone bill amounted to $100, you can claim $25 for that bill. Now, there's a whole list of uh, claim, claimable deduction, deductions. Um, this will vary depending on your occupation. Uh, some people may be entitled to some of these, some people may not be entitled to them. Uh, but basically, if you uh, are spending these sorts of items, uh, uh, you can claim a tax deduction provided you are doing so for the purposes of your job. So bags and briefcases, so, uh, you know, ladies' handbags, briefcases, anything that you use to carry stuff for work is claimable uh, for a, a, a deduction. The cost of conferences, seminars, training courses, provided that relates to specifically to your current income earning activity, your current job, uh, that is claimable. Uh, uh, fares, uh, public transport. If you uh, uh, catch public transport during the course of the working day, that doesn't include the cost of uh, transport from home to work, but during the working day, if you catch a bus or a train, uh, that is deductible. Fees for tax advice and preparation. The cost of preparing your tax return is itself tax deductible. Uh, so you, uh, you go along, you prepare your tax return, you pay the fee, you can claim it back. Uh, first aid courses, uh, insurance of work-related uh, equipment, uh, overtime meal expenses, uh, normal meal expenses during the working day are not claimable. So your, the cost of your lunch or your cost of your morning coffee is not claimable. claimable. But if you receive an allowance from uh, your employer and you purchase meals during a period of overtime, that is claim, claimable. Uh, parking fees incurred during the working day. Again, that doesn't cover the cost of parking uh, at your normal office, uh, which is private uh, in nature. But to, if you go out and about and you park, for example, at clients or, or at suppliers or whatever, uh, that is uh, uh, deductible. Uh, professional association fees, um, self-education expenses directly connected with your current employment. And that includes, as well as self-education expenses, it also includes travel, books, equipment, uh, all those sort of ancillary expenses that are connected with the self-education. Specialist publications, uh, so not newspapers or general publications, but specific to your profession. So, uh, for example, if you're in the fitness industry and you uh, subscribe to specialist fitness publications, that is a tax deduction. Um, sun protection, but only if you work outside. Um, so, uh, uh, if you uh, purchase uh, sun cream or a hat or whatever, um, uh, and, and you do work outside, that is a tax deduction. Stationery used for work-related purposes, uh, technical and professional publications, uh, travel, accommodation, and meals when traveling for work. So, for example, if you are uh, going over, going interstate, and you uh, for for a business meeting, and you have to stay overnight, uh, 
um, you can claim a deduction for the cost of your travel, your accommodation and your meals. Uh, Work-related clothing. Uh, there are quite tight rules around, around what is work-related clothing. Anything that you wear uh, normally, uh, uh, which isn't a specific uh, uh, work-related item, such as a, uh, a white uh, shirt or a pair of black pants or even a business suit, is not work-related clothing. Uh, but if you have, for example, a specific uniform where you work um, and you uh, have to wear that, that will be deductible if you have to go out by it yourself. Work-related car use. So uh, again, doesn't co cover the cost of the normal commute to and from home and work, but if you are using your car during the working day, going out to visit clients, suppliers, etc., uh, that is claimable uh, uh, either using the uh, cents per kilometer rate, which is 72 cents per kilometer, or using uh, uh, actual costs. So, Working from home expenses, very topical at the moment. Lots of people are working from home and have been uh, for a large part of the past uh, year. Um, there are deductions that you can claim for working from home. So if you work from home, you can claim a tax deduction for the work-related proportions of household costs, uh, uh, such as uh, heating, cooling, and lighting bills, uh, the costs of cleaning your home working area, and that includes, for example, uh, the cost of paying a domestic cleaner, uh, if, uh, if that is required, as well as the cost of various cleaning products. It covers uh, the depreciation of home office furniture and fittings, so your desk, your chair, your, your cupboards, etc. Um, it covers the cost of depreciation of office equipment and computers, so you've got to uh, uh, you've had to go out and buy a computer to work at home. You've got a mobile phone, a printer. Uh, all of those things can be claimed either uh, uh, up front or by depreciation over several years. You can claim the cost of repairing home office equipment. So, uh, 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 for example, your computer breaks down, you've got to get it repaired. Uh, that is tax deductible. Small capital items such as furniture and computer equipment, I've already said this, but small items such as furniture and computer equipment, which cost less than $300, uh, can be written off in full immediately. You can get an immediate deduction for the cost of those items less than $300. If it costs more than $300, it does need to be uh, uh, depreciated over several years. The cost of computer consumables, such as printer ink, uh, can be uh, written off, as can uh, stationery, which is used for work-related purposes. So you go out and you buy some paper for your home office printer, you go out and you buy a notebook, uh, all of that is claim claimable. Phone costs, both the mobile and the landline, to the extent you use that phone for your job, um, you can claim a deduction for those costs and internet expenses. Uh, if, we're, if you are working from home, you've got your computer uh, running uh, you know, 12 hours a day, uh, you're potentially using quite a lot of your home internet uh, to, uh, uh, to, 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 op to operate that. And that is also claim claimable. There are three different methods uh, you can use to, to uh, claim home office expenses. Uh, there's the ATO's uh, shortcut method, which is 80 cents per hour. Uh, this, that covers all possible claims. So it covers all of those. All of the items on the screen there are included in that 80 cents per hour. You can't claim anything in addition to that. Um, you need to keep a record of your working expenses, uh, of your working hours during the course of uh, the day uh, so that you can work out how much that uh, 80 cents per hour claim actually is. But other than that, you don't need any detailed record keeping, just a simple diary uh, outlining how many hours you worked per day. The alternative is the 52 cent rate, which doesn't sound as attractive, but actually in practice, because that rate excludes uh, phone, internet claims, uh, depreciation of equipment and computers, it very often works out to be a more substantial deduction. So if you claim the 52 cents per rate flat rate, again, keeping a diary of your working hours to, 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 to prove it, and you then claim separately uh, your, uh, your phone, internet, and uh, the depreciation uh, claim that can 
very often, uh, almost, in very, almost, almost invariably, in fact, uh, work out to be a much bigger claim than the uh, shortcut method. And finally, you can claim actual costs. Um, uh, that generally produces the biggest deduction of all, but uh, on the downside, you do need to keep a, di a diary uh, for four weeks uh, so that you can uh, work out the uh, uh, business and private uh, usage of those expenses. And you also need to keep uh, detailed receipts. So every uh, single item that you're claiming, you've got to have a receipt for that in order to be able to claim it. So it does produce a bigger deduction, but there is much more record keeping involved uh, with that, uh, that method. There are a number of deductions which are specific to uh, COVID-19. You may be able to claim uh, the cost of personal protective equipment if it's uh, a requirement of your job that you can't socially distance or your business requires cleanliness. Uh, so for example, if we've got people here who work in gyms, uh, they are typically going to be dealing on a day daily basis face-to-face -face with customers. So they will typically be able to claim these sorts of claims. So antibacterial soap and spray, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, face masks and shields, etc. All of those sorts of claims. So examples of the sorts of uh, uh, people who can claim, uh, obviously fitness staff, gym owners, but also if you're a hairdresser or uh, medical staff, and that includes doctors, nurses, uh, receptionists, cleaners, etc. Uh, in addition, retail staff who have to engage with customers on a, on a, on a frequent basis, and uh, school teachers, they can also claim. So uh, in it, lots of people can potentially claim COVID-19 protective equipment. You can claim uh, depreciation on any assets you purchase to use in your job. Uh, and that includes uh, the cost of a uh, mobile phone, a laptop, a tablet computer, uh, uh, in addition, home office furniture and equipment. You can only claim a de de deduction for depreciation for the uh, work use element. So you need to split the cost of the depreciation between work use and private use. But as, as I said on the previous slide, if you purchase a capital item for less than $300, you can claim the whole amount immediately. So much for what you can claim, but there are a whole list of things that you can't claim. So if you've ever claimed any of these, uh, well, that probably wasn't very sensible. Um, the daily cost of the commute to and from work, that's generally speaking, not claimable. Um, there are exceptions if you're carrying bulky tools and equipment, uh, if the bulky tools and equipment are uh, mandated that you, that you carry them by your employer and nowhere at your workplace is secure, so you can't keep them at your workplace. Uh, that, that does potentially make the daily commute tax deductible, but the ATO look at those claims very carefully. So uh, the vast majority of home to work journeys are not claimable. Childcare, um, you can't claim the cost of uh, sending your children to childcare. Um, club membership fees including, uh, usually speaking, uh, gyms, are not deductible. So if you uh, 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 pay a subscription to uh, a gym or a tennis club or any other type of uh, 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 club, even if you do some socialising uh, that's connected to your work at the club, the cost of that is not going to be deductible. Uh, the cost of attending social functions isn't deductible. Uh, the cost of your driver's licence isn't deductible. Uh, fines. So if you uh, run a red light or you get a speed uh, uh, ticket or you get a parking ticket, even if the journey that you were, journey that you were undertaking was uh, 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 work related, the fine is not deductible. Uh, glasses and contact lenses are not deductible, uh, with the exception of sunglasses if you're working outside. Uh, but to generally speaking, uh, glasses and contact lenses which simply correct your eyesight are not going to be deductible. Uh, rent, mortgage and other ownership costs when you work from home. I talked uh, a couple of slides ago about the things that you can claim when you work from home. Uh, 
unfortunately, uh, the cost of rent, the cost of mortgage, etc., are not included in that category. They can't be claimed uh, when you're working from home. So record keeping, you must keep records uh, to support your uh, tax lodgements for at least five years. Um, amongst that, uh, amongst the uh, records that you need to keep are income records. Uh, so for example, payment summaries or income statements, uh, records of investment income, uh, for example, bank interest and uh, dividends. Uh, so uh, uh, a, a statement from, for example, your mortgage provider, if you have an investment property, and also expense or purchase records. So for example, receipts, uh, invoices, credit card vouchers, bank credit card statements, that sort of thing. Uh, they, if the, the ATO can ask for that, and if you don't have it, uh, then potentially you are in trouble. And uh, you need to keep that, uh, uh, those records for five years, uh, even though uh, the ATO can actually only uh, uh, query a tax return for a period of two years, the law does state that you do need to keep your records for five years. So the low and middle income tax offset, this is something that most people um, uh, will receive if they're earning up to $126,000. Um, uh, low and middle income uh, earners are eligible for the low and middle income tax offset. So these offsets, they can reduce your tax down to zero, uh, but they can't reduce it any lower, if you see what I mean. So uh, this is not as such a, a cash handout. It's simply an offset uh, for, against your tax charge, which can reduce it down to zero. You get the tax offset when you lodge your tax return. Uh, there's quite an incentive, obviously, to lodge your tax return there. Uh, and uh, for that reason, uh, this year, we've seen quite a few people coming in earlier to lodge their tax return because they want to be able to get this tax offset uh, and they can't get it until they've lodged a tax return. The amount varies. Uh, it starts at $255 uh, and goes up to $1,080. So broadly speaking, if you earn between $48,000 and 90,000, you'll get $1,080 in uh, tax offset. Uh, that's the maximum amount. It goes down uh, uh, after $90,000 uh, and uh, it uh, disappears altogether at $126,000. So that's the situation for individuals. If there are any small business owners on this presentation, these are really some slides which are of relevance to you. Um, so if you run a small company, you need to be aware that uh, the tax rate for that company has gone down this year from 26 to 25%. Um, that isn't necessarily uh, good news because uh, if your small company pays out dividends this year, the tax credit attached to those dividends will only be at 25%, which means that you as a shareholder uh, will have to pay an additional amount in top-up tax. Uh, in effect, it shifts the tax burden from uh, companies to individual shareholders. So it's not really a tax cut as such. The companies that benefit from this are very much companies that uh, invest profits, retain profits to use in the business. They only pay 25%, and that is clearly a good thing. If you run a non-incorporated business, um, you'll receive the small business income tax offset. It reduces the amount of tax you pay. Uh, unfortunately, it's not particularly generous. It can only reduce your, your uh, tax liability in relation to your business by a maximum of $1,000 each year. But, you know, it's better than nothing. Temporary full expensing. Now, this is uh, available to... Uh, businesses, only to businesses. It can't be claimed by employees or investors or any other group. It's purely a business uh, tax relief. And it enables businesses to now deduct the full cost of fixed assets from their profits for the year, uh, rather than claiming depreciation over uh, several years. So from a cash flow perspective, this is quite a useful uh, tax break. It applies to assets uh, acquired from the 6th of October 2020, uh, which was the date of the, uh, the federal budget where, where this was uh, uh, announced. 
and uh, it applies right through until the 30th of June 2023. So you've got plenty of time to go out and take advantage and uh, buy those fixed assets. Now, previously there was, an, there was uh, a scheme called the Instant Asset Write-Off, which was capped at $150,000 per asset. Uh, there is no cap on uh, uh, the, the temporary full expensing schemes. There's no limit on uh, the cost of assets that can be deducted. Um, the, only, uh, the only real eligibility criteria is that you have to have an aggregated annual turnover of less than $5 billion. So uh, that covers the vast majority of Australian businesses. It applies to all new depreciating assets and also the cost of improvements to existing uh, depreciating assets. Uh, uh, in addition, for small and medium-sized businesses, uh, a small and medium-sized business in this context is one with a turnover less than $50 million, um, full expensing also applies to second-hand assets. Uh, so if, you're, if you've got a business with an annual turnover of more than $50 million, second-hand assets are excluded, but less than that, you can claim temporary full expensing for second-hand assets. What that means in practice is that uh, businesses can go out and uh, purchase, uh, uh, the, uh, deduct the full cost of purchases for items such as uh, uh, fixtures and fittings, uh, which includes items such as gym fit outs, uh, technology such as gym machines, uh, laptops, computers, FPOS systems, security equipment, also motor vehicles uh, such as utes, delivery vans, and uh, uh, most cars, uh, cars that costing more than 59136, which is called the expensive car limit, uh, the claim is capped at 59136. It's designed to uh, prevent people from going out and buying uh, you know, new BMWs, and, uh, Mercedes, and getting that uh, on, uh, getting a tax deduction for doing that. But most cars are costing less than 59136 will be eligible for temporary full expensing. In addition, there are some assets which are not eligible for full expensing. I already mentioned expensive cars, but in addition, uh, the costs of uh, buildings and other assets that are eligible for capital works deductions uh, and assets which are located overseas are not uh, qualifying for uh, temporary full expensing. Now, there are certainly businesses which don't necessarily want to claim a full deduction for the cost of writing off their, uh, their fixed assets. Uh, for example, if the cost of writing off your fixed assets uh, uh, leads your business into a loss-making situation, you probably don't want to do that. Uh, particularly if you're an, uh, an unincorporated business where you only have the option of carrying a loss forward to uh, use in future years. Um, Unfortunately, if you are a small business, uh, you don't have the option of opting out of temporary full expensing. If you are a business uh, uh, with a turnover of more than $10 million, uh, uh, the government has actually announced that uh, full expensing will be, to, to a large extent, voluntary. So you are able to opt out and simply claim it on an asset by asset basis. So you can claim it for certain assets and not for others. But if you are a small business, you do need to claim it. The only way that a small business can opt out of uh, uh, temporary full expensing is quite simply by opting out of the small business depreciation system altogether. Um, so it's not really a, 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 a there's not really a, 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 a level playing field, if you like, between small and large businesses there. In addition, small businesses must deduct the entire balance of their uh, simplified depreciation pool at the end of the, uh, the income year, uh, right through until uh, 30th of June 2023. So if you've previously written, uh, written down uh, fixed assets uh, and uh, you have a, a pool of uh, fixed assets which required in previous years, the entire cost uh, must be written off this year. That's generally speaking a very good thing, of course, because you can claim a, a potentially very significant tax deduction this year through doing that, but it isn't for everybody. Uh, again, if it turns your business into a uh, loss-making one and you're not uh, incorporated, that might not be something that you want to do. Unfortunately, you don't have any choice. Um, 
but for, for, for the vast majority of small businesses, it is very welcome. Now, it's now uh, 1.30 and I'm happy to take any uh, questions which are out there in the uh, audience. Well, I'm not happy to take any, but uh, certainly I'll, I'll get through as many as I possibly can in the next few minutes. Um, I'm just going to the chat box. Looking to see if anybody's asked any questions. Can't see anybody. I can't see. I can see lots of highs and hellos. Were you able to see the uh, Q and A box at all, Mark? Uh, the Q and A box. There's a couple in now. I can read them out. So we've got one from Anushka, um, who just asked if you can claim for IT software bought specifically for business. Uh, yes, you can claim temporary full expensing for that. So an immediate deduction for the cost of doing that. Okay. Wonderful. Um, we've got one from Anonymous um, come through. So uh, they've just said tax deductions for services provided in a client's home. Um, for example, travel to a client's home. Would they be able to claim that back? Uh, yes. I mean, that's work-related travel. So that, that would certainly be deductible. Yeah. Cool. I've um, seen a few mentions about the slides just popping up in the chat as well. So um, there'll be a recording that'll be available in our YouTube channel. Um, so I've just posted that above in the chat. Um, and if you don't know what that is, just type in Fitness Australia on YouTube and you'll be able to find that channel. So all the recording will be on there so you can access the slides um, on that recording. Um, I've got another question from Daniela that's come through who's um, asked, can you claim membership fees to an organization um, like Fitness Australia or a membership platform? Yeah, um, if, if membership of Fitness Australia is relevant to your income, so if you're in the... Uh, uh, the, the 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 fitness business then certainly you can claim a, a deduction for uh, the costs of a subscription to fitness australia and, and generally speaking that applies to any sub, such subscription so if you, if the uh, subscription is work related job related uh, then you can claim a deduction for that um and is with working from home expenses another question from anonymous um they uh, she, uh, they were under the impression that uh, previously you could claim rent expense if you have dedicated office space at home. Um, her primary job is, or that, sorry, their primary job is working from home. Um, it always has been with a de dedicated room for her office and she claims 10% of the rent. Yeah, generally speaking, you, if you work from home, you can't claim rent. Um, that, that, that's just the, uh, uh, the, the, the general rule. Uh, the only exception to that is if you don't have a, uh, uh, an office that you can go to. So I don't mean uh, in, a, in a COVID situation, you can't go to your office. I mean, you physically never have access to an office. So you, you work from home, you have an agreement with your employer that you work from home. Um, in that situation, you probably, well, you might be able to claim the rent, uh, but that is really the only exception to that rule. Also, if you have a business that you, that you operate from home, uh, such as, uh, you know, if you have a, a home office and that's where your business is based, uh, you can claim a deduction for home for home office exp for, for rent expenses or mortgage expenses then as well. Um, so another question comes through: What could be the reason that my agent didn't let me claim fitness clothing? Uh, well, if the fitness clothing isn't uh, work related, then certainly that is that, that that's a possibility. I mean. <laughs> Fitness clothing is, is generally speaking, conventional clothing. Um, and the fact that you have to wear it to work uh, at, at a gym doesn't really alter that fact. I mean, um, uh, I can go out shopping, I can do anything I like, and I can wear fitness clothing. It isn't unique to uh, a, 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 a gym setting. So I think uh, uh, fitness clothing is not gonna be uh, deductible on, that, on, that, on, on those grounds. Um, yeah, there's another question about gym wear that was answered. Um, so when logging um, for travel, would that be in the form of, of petrol or a logbook or either? To come from um, if you want to claim your actual travel costs, um, you will need to keep a logbook for 12 weeks so you can work out the, the split between uh, uh, work-related use and uh, private use. 
however, if you simply want to claim the cents per kilometer method, 72 cents, then you just need to keep a diary of your working, working journeys so that you can, uh, uh, at the end of the tax year, you can add up those journeys and then claim uh, eight, 72 cents per kilometer for each kilometer that you've traveled. So it, it is slightly different. You do need the logbook for actual expenses, uh, but for cents per kilometer, you don't need a logbook. We do need some kind of diary uh, to uh, work out your claim. I've got a question from Nikki. Um, and she said, as a run coach, when entering an event with clients, is the entry fee deductible? Uh, I, I, I don't know, frankly. I think uh, yeah, what, what, what is the situation really? Yeah, whereby, yeah, that, that's all this, this, through, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be able to provide some um, more information if you might be able to get that get, get back to that one. A um, couple of people put in that they wanted to um, have the tax-free threshold explained a little bit more. Yeah, it, you can earn eighteen thousand two hundred dollars without mm -hmm. paying any tax, uh, and that's that's been the case for many years. So, um, you know, that that's the tax-free threshold. Cool. Um, and what percentage can you claim for your own fitness app? That'd probably, yeah, that would come from John. For your own fitness app. So you've gone out and purchased a fitness app. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing you did. Yeah, must have, might have purchased a fitness app or he's, yeah, I'm not too, not too sure of the specifics, but yeah, it probably depends on it. Yeah, look, I, look, I, 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 I would be cautious about claiming anything for fitness app uh, because you know, anybody can claim, anybody can download a fitness app, uh, a Fitbit, you know. Uh, I, I don't think that they are going to be uh, claimable. Yeah. A question coming through from Karen. She asked, can you explain what qualifies as clothing expenses? Um, well, anything that's a uniform, um, so you, that you're obliged to wear, uh, that, that has, for example, the, uh, the logo of the place where you're working, that will be claimable. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so, so basically uniforms and, uh, 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 and that sort of thing are going to be claimable, uh, conventional clothing, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, your business suit, your, uh, your white shirt and black pants are not going to be claimable. That, that is conventional. It, it, it need, does need to be. Uh, something that you wear specific to your job, uh, which can't, generally speaking, be worn in any other circumstances. Yeah. Cool. Um, question from Brian for franchisee fee and gym rent. Um, how, how much percentage can we claim for? Uh, I would have thought 100%, to be honest. Mm. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you are a franchisee and you're, 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 you're renting out uh, uh, a gym space, that, that is entirely business related, so you could claim all of it. Um, so that one's, I think that one's already been answered, Ross, with the claiming gym membership. Oh, sorry, no, that's a little bit different. So um, Ross asked, can I claim gym membership as a fitness professional? He needs the gym environment to keep himself in shape and teach during his classes. Uh, probably not. Um, the ATO take a hard line on gym memberships. They can, they say, they state that only people who have, uh, an unusual level of fitness can, can claim them. So professional sports people, uh, members of the special forces, um, for example, um, most, uh, most people, including fitness professionals, I think wouldn't fall within that uh, category. So they can't claim gym memberships. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so a couple, a couple of questions come through around the same sort of thing, again, with clothing. Um, I'm just trying to summarize this in a a little bit. So I think most, yeah, from, from Tim and Lena, pretty much they just wanted to know in regards to they've got active wear that they might be wearing when they're taking classes or they've got branded clothing like Les Mills or, or yeah, sort of uh, they've got a logo on their clothes. I'm wondering if that would. Yeah, if the clothes have got the, uh, the, uh, the logo on them and uh, they are, uh, you're obliged to wear them by your employer, uh, then that will be deductible. Um, but uh, just normal active wear, that you can go out and buy anywhere uh, isn't um, work related. I mean, I, 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 the question's gone now. It was visible, but uh, um, uh, that suggested that you could wear you, could, you only wear active wear at the gym. Well, not everybody does. I mean, you can go to the supermarket and see people wearing active wear. Uh, in that circumstances, it is, it is conventional clothing. If the active wear has the 
a name of your employer and you are obliged to uh, to wear it uh, by the, uh, the, the 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 gym, then it probably is deductible. If it's not, uh, if it's generic active wear, it probably isn't. Yeah, now, I, I assume it'd be a similar scenario for fitness shoes as well. I saw a question come to you for Robert in that regard. Uh, yeah, I mean fitness shoes. They they are simply generic. They're, they they will they will be classified as conventional footwear, unfortunately. Yeah, cool. No worries. Um, okay, and uh, what about claiming back a business name, registration, or trademark that comes through from Kira? Um, that would be uh, a capital expense, but yes, it would be claimable for tax as as a capital expense. Okay. Um, question from anonymous again: As a new business owner, how much of my income should I put aside for tax? Oh, I mean, well, I don't, I, uh, that's not one I can answer, really. Um, how, how much of my income should I put aside for tax? It depends how much your income is. Uh, um, yeah, depending on the specifics. Yeah. And of course, with, with a lot of these questions as well, like it's obviously um, easy for yourself to answer, Mark, for the specifics. So um, like, 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 like on the screen, guys, there's um, the contact number for H&R Block, or you could visit their, their site as well to um, get independent advice for, yeah. for your situation as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so another one. Um, okay, that one's sort of been answered. How much in dollar? So this is coming from from Aileen. Uh, how much in dollar value maximum can you claim on cash purchases? I if she bought items from Facebook Marketplace, but there's no invoice provided or receipts. Yeah, if there's no invoice provided or receipts provided, then you can't claim it really because you do need to be able to prove that you spent it. Um, uh, unless the item is less than ten dollars. And um, then, then you don't need substantiation, um, uh, and the uh, but 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 you know even there you do need something to demonstrate um, uh, what you spent the money on, and uh, uh, those sort of cash purchases can't exceed two hundred dollars. So, but 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 the general rule is that you do need a receipt um, or an invoice for it to be claimable. <coughs> Um, okay, so question from Helen. Does the 12-week logbook for car expenses have to be done every year or every three years? Uh, it's good for five years, so you only need to do it once every five years, unless, five years. unless there's a major change in the way you use your car. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and uh, for a question from Ross. As a fitness professional, can I claim my fitness here? That's been answered. Um, If fitness, okay, so question from Natalie, if fitness is a casual role, but we have a full-time role in the same company, both in local government, can I claim deductions for both roles? Yes. Yeah, cool. Um, question from Nikki, if you created a team for your clients to join as part of an event, example, a run Melbourne, um, and running in this event has been the client's training goal, is the entry fee deductible? Uh, I mean, client to say not, but, um... I, I want to understand the a bit more about the circumstances, but uh, it doesn't seem to be deductible. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, question from Tim. Can I claim a white shirt with my own logo as advertising? So it's their own logo. Would that change the circumstances at all? Uh, potentially, yes. If it's business related? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Um, and okay, so if a PT buys a client a cup of coffee or a snack after a session, is that deductible? No, fortunately not. <laughs> no, yeah, cool. Okay, no worries. Um, that's all the questions for now. Is there anything? I'm just quickly, quick through the chat. Um, okay, any question about, um, can you claim your car mileage if you are a casual? Uh, car mileage in what sense is it? Uh, that's... If, if it's car mileage from home to work, you can't claim it. Yeah. But if it's car mileage, it, it's the same rule for, 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 for all employees. So it's, if, if it's incurred during the working day, uh, traveling between working premises or or whatever, then you can claim it. Yep. Yep, cool. Perfect. Um, another question's come through from Matthew. So just confirming, um, he just asked, can sole traders deduct the entire cost of a laptop and phone used for business? Um, using the temporary full expensing method if more than one was purchased in the same financial year due to the previous one having a fault. Can you claim more than one phone or laptop? Each yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. 
Cool. Perfect. Um, I think that is all the questions that I can see for now. Um, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for, for putting your time aside to um, yeah provide that information. That was really great. And um, yeah, like we said before, guys, if you've got any uh, specific questions about your situation or anything like that, um, then please contact um, H&R Block. Their phone number is just there and you can visit their website as well. Um, as well, guys, we do have a networking session that will be around this afternoon. Um, so that'll be online from 2.30, around 2.15, 2.30. Um, so if you are available, um, then we'd love to have you along. Um, so you've, you should have all received an email this morning in regards to uh, the link for that. So um, it'll just be sort of a meeting where you guys will be broken up into separate rooms um, and you can just speak amongst yourselves pretty much. So uh, you can chat about how lockdown's going for those that are in it, um, to talk about things in the fitness industry and um, yeah, good chance to sort of catch up with people. Um, yeah, like like in the, in the fitness industry like yourself. So um, yeah, we'd love to have you there. Um, so please come along. And if you need the link, please just email us at info at fitness.org.au. Uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thank you again, Mark. Thank you. Cheers.